Income tax 2023-2024, net profit or loss and net operating losses, otherwise known as NOL's tax software example. Get ready and some coffee. Stay alert. Otherwise, tax preparation can easily become too taxing. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point with Adam tax man just trying to avoid a dang tax man living in beverly hills 90210 single filer to start off with no dependents we have the schedule c income rolling into line eight let's follow that schedule c income so we can get an idea of that flow through we've got the schedule c profit or loss from business having a normal income statement format income minus expenses in this case 120,000 of income, 20,000 of expenses, in essence, the net income, the 100,000, which rolls into the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income. Part number one, additional income. Line number three, business income or loss. There's the 100,000 that rolls into the form 1040, the form 1040, 100,000 on line eight. Also, back to the schedule C. We see the net income, 100000 bottom line, rolling into the Schedule SE, otherwise known as the self-employment tax, where we calculate Social Security and Medicare, currently at line 12, 14, 129, which rolls into Schedule 2, which is the additional taxes, part number 2, other taxes, line four, self-employment tax, 14129 which ultimately rolls to the form 1040, page number two, on line 23, other taxes, 14129 Also, back to that Schedule SE, we get half of that self-employment tax calculated on line 13, 7065 as an above-the-line deduction, which rolls into the Schedule one. Additional income and adjustments to income, page number two, which is part number two, adjustments to income, line number 15, deductible part of self-employment tax, there's the 7065, which pulls into the 1040, page number one, line number 10, adjustments to income. So we have now on first page, 1040, line eight, 100,000, the adjustments to income, 7,065, the AGI adjusted gross income, 92,935, the standard deduction being taken here, single filer, 13,850. We also have the qualified business income deduction from form 8,995, 15,817, subtotal here for the total taxable income, 63,268, page two, Calculating the federal income tax with the progressive income tax system, 9228 adding that to the Social Security and Medicare self-employment tax that we looked at, 14129 gives us a total tax, 23357 Okay, so let's go back to the page one. Uh, no, that's not page one that I was trying to do. Page one. So note that if we have income, once we get the Schedule C calculated, everything basically rolls forward here fairly nicely. The IRS basically says, hey, we're your silent partner and good for you for making income. We're going to take a bunch of it for the Social Security, Medicare and federal income taxes. But what happens if you have a loss? Then the IRS is going to be skeptical, right? So let's imagine that we have a loss situation. So if I go back on over here, 
and we say, okay, do, 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 and we're gonna say that now my expenses add up to 130,000. Okay, going back to my forms, Schedule C. Now we had income of 120,000, but it took me $130,000 to make that 120,000, resulting in a loss of the $10,000. Now, of course, the question here is, well, IRS, I know you're my I know you're my partner and everything, so why don't you give me like some of the money uh, according to the tax rate for the loss that I endured this year? And the IRS is like, no way, dude, but maybe you will let you take it against other income. So like if you had W-2 income, then maybe we'll let you take that. But in this case, we don't have any because this was our only like income source. So we don't have any other income over here to take it against. So you can see that ba basically that went into the schedule one. Here's the, here's the line three on uh, the loss. And then we're going into form 1040, but we've got nowhere to, we've got nowhere to go, nowhere to take the 10,000 because we've got no other income. And you're like, well, dude, IRS, like when I make, when I make money, you're, you're totally my silent partner and I give you some of it. So when I lose money, like you should give, you should endure some of the losses, but no, we know that's not how things, we know that's not how things are going to work here, but maybe they'll allow us to take the loss against future income. So that's where we have this NOL uh, type of situation. So for example, we have our NOL worksheet over here uh, and we're coming down to calculating the 10,000, 2023 net operating loss that possibly we can roll forward. Now, looking back at the Schedule C, you can see why they might be skeptical, of course, of the losses because uh, if we had income and we reported something on the Schedule C, as we saw, it's not only going to have an impact for the federal income taxes, but it's also going to have an impact, a huge impact for the Social Security and Medicare uh, that we have to pay. But if we go, if we have an actual loss, then not only are we, we're not paying, of course, Social Security, Medicare, uh, uh, or federal income taxes, and we might be able to take this against basically uh, other income. So a loss could be hugely benef you know, beneficial from a tax standpoint if we're allowed to take it, say, against other income, which I will show uh, shortly. However, uh, if it was not a business, for example, let's say that we had many losses for multiple years, like three years of losses, the IRS is going to be more and more skeptical that, hey, maybe this isn't a legitimate business and it's basically a hobby. Remember that if you have income in something, it has to be a legitimate business endeavor in order to record that income on the Schedule C, which has its pros and cons, as we talked about when we looked at uh, different types of income in a prior course or section. And one of those types of income could be, say, from a hobby. Now, if something were a hobby, then I wouldn't report it on the Schedule C. We would be reporting it somewhere on uh, the Schedule 1 in the additional income. It's under line number 8 and then activity not engaged uh, in for profit. The downside of that is we're typically not going to be able to deduct basically our expenses against it. That's the benefit of being on the Schedule C. But the plus side is that if I do have income, I'm not going to be paying Social Security and Medicare on it if it was a hobby. I'm only going to be paying the federal income uh, taxes on it. So if I so if I could choose one or the other and all I had was income with no expenses, we might be more beneficial to put it over here on a hobby because, of course, then again, I don't have to pay Social Security and Medicare, but just the federal income taxes. If I go on the Schedule C, the benefit of having the Schedule C is that we get a significant amount of expenses that we can deduct, which is going to lower our income a lot, which will pull down the net income. But as long as I still have some net income, if this was still positive, I would not only be paying the, the federal income taxes, but also the Social Security and Medicare. But of course, if I have a loss, then once again, I'm not paying federal income taxes, Social Security, Medicare, the self-employment taxes, and might be able to get that benefit against uh, basically other income. So you can imagine that the IRS might be skeptical of losses. It could be like a red flag, for example, 
to have large losses that the IRS might be skeptical of. It's natural, however, for businesses to have losses, especially in the first few years of business, many businesses having losses for like three years or so, and then they're going to have income in the future. And you would think if this was a legitimate losses, this was a business that was legitimately trying to seek revenue, then you should get a deduction for the, these, you should get a benefit for these losses, for these expenses. Now you can see why the IRS is say not going to pay you for that, for the losses that you have, because it's possible the business could go under or whatever. And, but you would think that you should be able to take it against at least future business revenue if the business actually becomes uh, legitimate because we had to incur the startup costs and whatnot. You might have more expenses at the beginning, build up clientele so that the future revenue is actually dependent on the foundation that you put in place on the first few years of operations where you had a loss. So that's why you would think it would be reasonable to have the carryover of the loss that can be deductible uh, against uh, future years. It's also why you shouldn't, if you actually have a business that is engaged for profit, just make sure that you can prove that in the event of an of an audit and the losses should be legitimate losses, no problem. However, if you have losses for more than three years, there might be more, uh, the IRS is going to, you can have to prove your innocence more, right? The IRS is going to assume that it's not for profit and you're going to have to prove to them that it is for profit possibly uh, if you have more than three years of losses. So just keep that in mind. Again, as long as you have legitimate business intent and profit seeking motives, then it, you shouldn't be afraid really to report losses if they're legitimate. Okay, let's imagine that we had other income that we're going to report it against. So let's go back on over and say that we had like W-2 income. So now I'm going to say W-2 income uh, was 30. Let's say, let's say W-2 income was 70,000. So now we have our side business as the Schedule C business. We still have that $10,000 loss. But now if I go to the Schedule 1, we still have the 10,000 rolling in here. Going to page 1, we have uh, the 70,000 minus the 10,000. So now we're able to take that 10,000 against uh, uh, the W-2 income, which is great because that brings my total income down that we're gonna be paying less taxes on. Notice in some ways you would almost think it would still be better to pull it forward and, and net it out against against business income if you could, right? Because you're still because you'd like to net out the social security and Medicare taxes that you're still that you're that you're paying. You're only reducing here for uh, the federal income taxes. But that's how it is. All right. And then you can imagine that if if we did have a loss carryover from the prior year into the current year, you might see that, for example, in the net operating loss section, rolling forward from period to period. So you might have a uh, carryover available uh, in 2023. Let's say that there was a 5,000 year of loss was in 2022. Let's say it was 5,000 and now it's carrying forward to 2023. So now you've got the 5,000 that might pull in here that's going to the, the form uh, 1040. Now, note that anytime you have a more complicated return, and I would say any return that has a Schedule C is going to start to be quite complicated, even if it's a basic Schedule C, then if you pick up a new client or if you switch software that you're using, I would recommend entering prior year software, meaning instead of just trying to take the last year's paper tax return and then use it to enter into the current year 2023 i would take the 2022 tax return try to enter it into our software for the prior period so that you can mirror exactly what the tax return you have is to the new software that you're inputting which will make it easier for the software to help you with things like carryovers of say an NOL. So anytime you have a carryover of a, of a loss or something like that, that's usually gonna be the best strategy because the software can help you carry the prior loss over to the current period. That might cost more because you might be paying on a per return basis, but that might be the, you know, the best thing to do to make sure that you're starting off on the right foot especially if you have a more complex tax return, which again, I would assume would be anything with a Schedule C 
anything with a Schedule A, and certainly anything that has carryovers that are going to be involved within it. But that's just uh, a tip.